Hello, fellow cyborgs, and welcome to the wrap up of 2015 Crusher TBR Readathon. So, first, let me just sum up what happened. Yesterday, I started and read 215 pages of The Wise Man's Fear. That is all of the reading that I did on Sunday. I was feeling a little lazy and also successful already, so I didn't feel like I needed to push myself. Also, The Wise Man's Fear and Patrick Rothfuss in general is not the sort of author you want to rush through just for the sake of getting it read. It's the sort of long high fantasy epic fantasy that you just want to savor like I, a hard candy and you don't want to just <laughs> you want to suck it slowly savor the flavor on day one I started and finished beautiful chaos by Gary Russell and this is a 50th anniversary Doctor Who novel. This had obviously 10 Donna Noble, Will Noble, and Sylvia Noble in it, as well as other extraneous characters, as always pops up in Doctor Who episodes. I give this a three out of five stars. It was fast paced and entertaining, but I have found the two Doctor Who novels that I have read, they are written exactly like the 40 minute episodes of Doctor Who, which are amazing, but it takes me five, six, seven times the 40 minutes to finish it. So a lot of the jokes aren't as snappy and the tension is just drawn out ridiculously just, just because my reading speed is not going to be 40 minutes per book. So I don't enjoy, I haven't enjoyed the two books that I've read as much as I have enjoyed the television show. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be picking up any more Doctor Who novels, but if you just want more Doctor Who adventures and you don't care what form it comes in, I highly recommend you pick up any of the Doctor Who books because it's exactly what you're going to get. Also on day one, I started Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor and I read 400 pages of this on day one or 410, excuse me. I had so much fun reading this and it was really amazing. And I will insert here the clip I withheld from you on my day two wrap up. Hello fellow cyborgs, it is just afternoon and I have just finished. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's my happy noise! <laughs> okay, so I was like giggling and laughing so much through this book because Lady Taylor is just like, she just promises you chocolate and she gives you chocolate. It's amazing. There were no less than three happy beginnings in this book, which was Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, coherence, 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 coherence. So it was really fast paced and there was so much promise in the book that like in the entire series, Karu and Akiva don't kiss until three quarters of the way through the last book. And yet, it's not irritating or frustrating, it's just oh, luscious and so deeply romantic. I have never read anything that captures just like soulmates better than the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, and it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> So there was so much of uh, the romance that just didn't, couldn't, uh, between Karu and Akiva and then Ziri! Ah! Ziri! Oh my goodness, that was really awesome! Oh, so good! And then we also learned stuff about Rasgut, and it gets really complicated. But the cool thing is that Lainey Taylor decides to end it right at the cusp and you know at the cusp of like in essence another six books sort of like an adventure but I we don't really I don't feel like I need to see that I don't need to see like more epic battles and things like that and so you end at a calm before a big storm but it's not like the storm's gonna happen in two weeks it's a big thing that everyone needs to get prepared for and so at the very end of the book, Karu and Akiva are separate for, separated, for a reason I'm not going to divulge, 
And then at the very end, they finally get to come back together. And then the scene closes right where the fan fiction can pick back up. It's just amazing. I was... Uh, I am so impressed. If I ever could become a polished writer, I would aspire to be a polished writer like Lainey Taylor. There's just so much wonderment and beauty and detail and poetry in her prose and stories and it never diminishes. No matter how bleak things look and no matter how many books or words she writes, it's still there right from the beginning with a girl covered in tattoos with naturally blue hair and a necklace full of wishes. It's just fantastic. <laughs> So yeah, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this so much. I enjoyed the trilogy so much. It just was exactly my cup of tea. So the total for this book was 610 pages roughly, and that combined with the Doctor Who's 240 rough page count, so far we're up to an 850 page count for the readathon. Then in the aftermath of Dreams of Gods and Monsters, I picked up Eva Ibbotson's two-in-one Not Just a Witch and Dial a Ghost. I enjoyed Dial a Ghost better than Not Just a Witch, but both of them were delightful. Eva Ibbotson is amazing in that she doesn't hide the evils of the world from children. So for instance, in Not Just a Witch, there, the whole premise of the book is that this witch is trying to do good by turning evil people into fluffy, adorable animals that don't carry evil. These people are actually bad people. Like, one of them runs a home for elderly care and abuses the elders. And Eva Ibbotson doesn't hide that. She doesn't make it graphic and she doesn't make it too horrible, but she definitely gives children a taste of a world that isn't perfect and isn't fluffy unicorns and sugar and spice, but that never discourages the characters. It's never like, oh, the world is then terrible. It's always like, well, we're going to make it better. And it's, it was great. The whole volume was four out of five stars from me, but I loved Dial a Ghost better than Not Just a Witch. This one was about having to relocate ghosts and having them to have to find a home. And this orphan who makes a family out of ghosts and there are these two really terrible ghosts that are just awful, like they will scratch children to death, sort of awful. Oh, but it was just really good. These two books kind of reminded me of the series of unfortunate events, but with happy endings that don't happen after 13 volumes, I've been told, maybe. I got to volume five and then just was in such despair as a 10 year old, I had to put it down. So yes, Eva Ibbotson, if you haven't picked up her children's work, I haven't yet read her young adult or adult works, but her children's books are really, Great. I highly recommend Eva Ibbotson. And then this volume was an additional 300 pages, so the page count we're looking at now is 1,150 pages. And then finally, day three, picked up The Wise Man's Fear, and in this I read 215 pages. I'm obviously not going to tell you anything about The Wise Man's Fear because I haven't finished it yet, but let's just say that I am so enjoying it and this book is great for creating reading flow where it's I want to start watching that TV show again. Oh wait, no, I was reading that sort of reading experience and I forgot how hysterical Kvothe is. I forgot how much I remembered about the world that I had to make up in my mind so I'm not nearly as lost as I thought I was with the like one year gap between The Name of the Wind and this, its sequel. And I am just so thrilled that I, like a dum-dum, finally took me this long but I finally picked it up. So for my first readathon, I read 1,365 pages. I'd say that was pretty fantastic. Yeah, so now the books that I didn't get to over the weekend. CJ Cherry's Gate of Ivril will just have to wait for another readathon or another bright sunny day where I have the liberty to pick up a new book. Skullduggery Pleasant's Last Stand of Dead Men also did not get touched by me over the weekend, so I am still eagerly awaiting reading this. And apparently the final ninth volume in the, in the Skullduggery Pleasant series is out. This is the eighth. It's out. The series is done. And I'm like, like I don't want, it's like Harry, I still haven't read the seventh book of Harry Potter, guys. Like I've seen the movie, so I know what happens roughly. I know the movie translations of the book. I still haven't read the seventh book because I just don't want it to be over. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to read the ninth book. 
So yeah, so I still have the eighth and then theoretically the ninth to read in this adorably lovely hysterical magical series. So maybe that'll be happening soon. And then also fortunately during the readathon I was not ter so terribly bored that I needed to dip into my graphic novels so I still have volumes seven of Hellboy and The Unwritten to sink my teeth into during an afternoon where I just would like to. All right, cyborgs, that is it. So in my first readathon, I got through three books, started a fourth, and read 1,365 pages, unless I got it wrong, and then I keep repeating the wrong number, but I think I got it right. It's 8.30 in the morning, you guys, mental math. It's not kicked in into my processing unit yet. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my vlogging weekend extravaganza. It was a little bit tiring, but not terribly much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed reading whatever you got to this weekend. And until next time, continue to be lovely.